Welcome to Africa Lenezi. We are heading to the British Museum to continue with our story or our series of aspects of Africa in London. Don't forget to subscribe, share and like and comment of course with some recent comments um, for, for the channel to grow. Here we're going to start. We're about to turn right, as you can see, Museum Street. And due to due to coronavirus, the place looks a little bit quiet. Normally, it is quite busy, but let's see. Right at the end of the cul-de-sac. On the other side, it's the British Library. So, let's see if we can... The British Museum. It's in the London's Bloomsbury area. Uh, it was established as far back as uh, 1751. And it's renowned to house at least about 8 million pieces of artifacts. Um, this was all put together by the Irish physician or an Irish physician by the name of uh, Sir Hans Sloan. Uh, the museum is said to have, to have opened to the public or to the general public as far back as 1759. Let's see if we can see the thought. Sir Hans uh, Sloan's collection at the Museum on Balance were looted or appropriated from other countries under the guise of um, Christian crus Crusaders, known as the British Empire. I don't know if you could see it. Here is the front section of the, la of the museum. It appears they are doing some renovation work. So it seems to be closed to the public. But this is the main entrance. I mean, the the Parthenon marbles, which were sculptures uh, on uh, Greece's Acropolis of Athens, were appropriated continuously from 1801 to 1812 uh, by thieves or so-called agents working for the then Thomas Bruce, who was meant to be the seventh Earl of Elgin and smuggled into Britain. As you can imagine, um, this was a calculated intent. It was done deliberately. Now, similarly, one of the renowned African artifacts, as I can see, you can see the streets, how beautiful this area looks. Just look at that. As I'm saying, one of the renowned uh, Af African artifacts appropriated from the Kingdom of Kemet which is modern-day Egypt, uh, was the Rosette stone. Yeah, The texture of the Rosette stone is or was similar to today's granite. And the looters were fascinated to have seen one of the uh, Egyptian decrees at that time meticulously inscribed on the stone. Um, and to top it all, the inscription was in two languages, the Egyptian hieroglyphic, which was translated into ancient Greek. The decree is said to have been promulgated in Memphis, Egypt, around 196 BC. Look at the opulence of this building, of this museum, Look how beautiful it is. It's a shame the gates are locked for us to be able to go in. Now, the Rosette Stone was appropriated and smuggled in broad daylight to London in around 1801 or 1801 under the guise of the victory of the city of Alexandria at that time. The stone, the stone is said to have been in display uh, to the public since uh, 1802. All right. Now the discovery of the Rosette Stone was the key that enabled invaders to decode, to decipher, uh, to sort of unlock the Egyptian literature 
whereas for centuries it had, it had been one of the most difficult things for invaders to actually figure out. So there we go. So the British Museum, let me see if we can go. It houses many spiritual and ancient sculptures, such as the Benin bronze from the modern day Nigeria and Benin. As you could see, you can see a little display of what's there, what's being displayed on British, which is coming soon, it says, from 22nd of April to 26th of July, but it's probably past now. There you go. <clears throat> so uh, the British Crusaders, under the guise of the British Empire, looted the sculptures uh, in the in the city of Benin, which, uh, Nigeria, as far back as 1879, when the city of Benin was destroyed. Um, the city of Benin was destroyed because, I mean, basically, how dare that African king? His name was um, Oba Ovan Ranwe. In Baisi. He ruled from 8, 1888 uh, to 1897. There were custom duty taxes. The British were upset as to how dare that African king impose duty taxes on us. We're British, we don't pay any duty taxes. That was the precipice for them to start looting the city and destroying the city. So look at that. So the truth be, truth be told, this is the, the boundary, Africa and many other nations have asked for their looted items to be returned, but the British Museum has found ways to avoid returning the looted property. I mean, let's listen to, I mean, for, for instance, listen to a quote from the former um, Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Mr. David Cameron, as far back as 2013. He said, and I quote, I certainly don't believe in returnism, as it were. I don't think that's sensible. So how could that make sense? If you stole in somebody's items and the person wants it back, and you come up with a ridiculous reason by saying you don't believe in returnism because you don't think it's sensible, or you don't think that's sensible, does that make sense to you? It smells of high heaven to me. And in fact, if we go a little bit further back, not, not that far off, uh, the British Prime Minister Tony Blair, the former British Prime Minister Tony Blair in 1997, also was said to have quoted by saying, the empire should be the subject of neither apology nor hand wrangling. Just listen to that. So if you steal anybody's item right now in this country and they want it back, they will go through tooth and nail to make sure you return that item. There's no way you're going to get away with it by saying, I don't believe in returnism, you know, or the, the, the empire should be the subject of neither apology nor hand wrangling. I mean, to wrap things up, Sir Hans Sloan is said to have owned or inherited uh, a plantation through marriage in Jamaica around I mean, 1695, which is clearly indicative proof that apart from the African looted artifacts, Sir Hans Sloan and the British Museum have also benefited enormously from the sweat and suffering of the enslaved Africans during the Atlantic trade. Let me see if I can try and ask the security guards if they can allow me to. Uh, take a shot of this. Hi there. So take a shot of the. You can't come inside. Okay. Where you are. Okay. As you could see, the security guard allowed me to take a shot from here, from this when position. Are you, when are you opening? Uh, please, you have to check online. Okay. And when we're going to be opening, there's no certain date now. You can see the work is still ongoing. <laughs> All right, we got, inter we, got, we got interrupted from somebody asking when the museum is going to be open, which you could clearly check on the web. 
but there you go there's the opulence of the museum the British Museum in England look how beautiful it is uh, let me see Whoa. there we go just briefly and parts of it from there I can't go in to show you more thank you very much guys thank you all right okay thanks so you can see there we go Let's see if I can turn this thing around and you can see the back. There you go. Um, the reason I brought you here is to show you um, aspects of Africa in London. Um, very often Africans are marginalized in Europe, but truth be told, a lot of these um, <clears throat> A lot of these uh, beautiful buildings or beautiful architectural structures you see today in Britain and the rest of Europe, Africans have contributed a great deal uh, to, to the building and to the maintenance of the building. As, in, as informed, Hans Sloan, he had a plantation in Jamaica through marriage as far back as 1695. And he's the one who started uh, this um, museum the british museum i don't know if you can actually have a look if i can have a last look at it let's see this is behind me as you can see it goes all the way down there this is just the frontal view so don't underestimate the africans embrace your culture you have contributed a great deal irregardless of what what the media or what somebody else says this was just a way of bringing you or aspects of Africa in London. I hope you enjoyed it. Until our next, our next clip. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Bye-bye.